So guys, what's happening? We're here for another live stream. Um, today we are going to go back to school. We're going to learn a little bit about front wheel drive rally cars um, and how to get the most out of them. So that's the plan anyway. We'll see how it goes. How are we all doing? So the plan is, I think we will uh, jump into dirt fish, we'll play around with front wheel drive car a little bit, talk a little bit about some of the techniques that we're going to do um, to, to you know, optimize driving front wheel drive car, get the most from it, and then we'll do some tweaks as well uh, with the setup, and then we'll go to a proper stage, but it's... Um, it's a good opportunity for you guys to uh, ask me questions about front wheel drive as well. It's what we'll try and focus on today. Hello Sasquatch. Uh, my weekend's been good. Um, yesterday I climbed a pretty big hill. I don't think it's classified as a mountain. It's like 1,300 feet up. Um, but yeah, that's what I've done yesterday. I had a day off yesterday doing that um but yeah pretty good weekend what about you i mean my legs ache today um they're a bit sore do, 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 do. so we've got 10 people watching we wait for hopefully some more to join and then we will uh hop in and get started Sweet man, it's always nice to chill out. Uh, have you have you given up on the the Sasquatch hunt in there, or is it still an ongoing thing? Hello, Mister uh, Consani GT. I have no idea what what you just said. I guess, don't know what language that is. That's Spanish. Right, so if we hop in to leasing. Should be all good. Yeah, it's all good. Hello Diego, good to see you here bro. Yeah, Sasquatch, I think uh, it's about time you changed your name. <laughs> Maybe. Um, it might be worth changing it, but I think it's quite good. You might have to tell me your, your real first name so I can call you that instead of Sasquatch. Hello Mike, hope you're good. Okie dokie, so we're in Dirtfish, um, we've went in with the Opal Atom R2, got default setup for the moment, so we'll just go and talk about a few things to begin with, um, we'll talk a little bit about driving techniques, and then we'll, uh, if you guys want to ask me questions, we can answer those, 
and then we can do some setup changes as well. Okay, Brian, I'll try and remember that. I'll try and remember your name. Um, hello, G Keep. Thanks for tuning in. So we'll start off with some basics. Um, so you've never driven a rally car before. You've been given the keys of this Opel Atom. What do you do? Um, so, first of all, um, you can use the clutch if you want. I've got clutch override on, so you can see that um, it's not. It's not. You know, you got you got the clutch in. It's not letting you go. You let it out. Um, it's still not letting you go because I got the handbrake on. So. It's not crucial in terms of takeoff because the handbrake's always going to hold you anyway in, in Dirt Eye 2.0. But uh, clutch control is something that you do want to think about in front wheel drive cars. So we just go for a little drive around. I think one of the main things with front wheel drive cars is always trying to make sure the front wheels have traction because they're the driven wheels um, and that means you need to be tentative with the throttle you need to be precise with your steering input so you're not putting on too much lock and um, forcing oversteer uh, which also obviously takes away traction in the front wheels um, really you just want to be precise as you can with these and not go too sideways so let's focus on the basics if you're let's get a little gravel section here and focus on getting away from a start line yeah gt i'll do a stream for um rear wheel drive at some point as well yeah i will do we'll so we'll, we'll start off with front wheel drive and see how that goes so you're on the start line, you want to select first gear. Um, like I say, you can use a clutch, but it's not a huge benefit because the handbrake holds the car in a way. But what you want to do is build the revs up, but not too much. And then when you drop, you get a wheel spin, but you can come off the throttle and, and get traction um, quicker. So we just do that again. Just to show you, you want to build the revs up not too high. What are you going to? About six thousand six and a half. And you, in real life, you'd have to clutch out. You find a buy point, but like I said, it does not uh, have really an influence on the ride 2.0. And then you can let the handbrake out a little bit, and then you can floor it. But then you come back on the throttle a bit to get traction. Um, you know, especially if you've got worn tires, it's going to help you. Uh, Find attraction. I can probably show you that better with hard tires, which would be more what um, a worn set of softs would be like. So let's go with hards, just to show you this. Hello, Mr. Jones R5. So we got hard tires on, which should mean we can show you find attraction a bit better now um, off the start line. So, I say, let's go again. We build the revs up to about six and a half, seven thousand. And we let it go. Loads of wheel spin, but you don't watch my throttle inputs. I'm not going completely floored because you're not going to get traction then. You're going to induce more wheel spin. So, I'll do it the wrong way now. So. This would be the wrong way, too much revs and then you're getting loads of wheel spin there. It might not look the slowest way, but certainly if you're looking to get traction, then you want to uh, modulate the throttle a bit better. So you want to come up to about 7,000, say, 6,500, 7,000, and then let it out. And 
look, just come back in the throttle, and then you can use a little bit of clutch between second and third. That's what you would do in real life, to Because uh, the dog gears, whenever you've got no traction, you've got wheel spin, the dog gears can um, hit each other or not go into place correctly, so you can use a little dab of the clutch just to prevent that when you're getting wheel spin. So that's sort of that um, modulating the throttle when you're getting wheel spin. It's not only for when you're off the start line. Um, it's sort of all places with uh, a front wheel drive car you want to have good throttle management to try and find the traction. So I come in here and go like that. Oh, okay, I wasn't expecting the car to... <laughs> I was expecting the car to understeer a bit there, but uh, it didn't. Um, Say so we come into this hairpin, and we handbrake, and we're just following the throttle there. The car is not getting any traction, um, so we want to we want to modulate the throttle a bit better. So we come in, handbrake. Look, we pump, almost pump the throttle until we find the traction. So you almost want to build up that sensation in your right foot. Uh, we're just we're playing with the throttle till we, till we know we have the grip that we want before going on, um, on the throttle fully, 100%. So that's sort of throttle management. Uh, Brian says, I know some drivers use brake points and some do it by feel. What do you do? Um... If you're referring to a place on the track that you want to brake at, I think in in uh, in racing games, rally games, it's quite a good thing to do because you can quite easily build up a sort of knowledge of where your latest point to, to brake is. Um, you know, say you want to, you know, every time you brake at this log pile, you're going to make it for the corner you're gonna make it for this corner, then yeah, that's fine. You know, that's that's a good way to learn. But in real life, obviously, you only get two passes over Reki, um, and you want to not rely on breaking points as such. If you know that you can stop within, say, 100 meters, and you know that this log pile is 100 meters before the corner, sure, you can, say, break at the logs in your pace notes. Um, it's personal preference, really, but I know that if you are going to um, use roadside uh, objects as breaking um, markers, that you want ones that aren't going to move, like trees or houses, walls. Uh, don't be using signs or orange arrows or anything like that. Um, so we've sort of covered throttle management it's still something that we're going to talk about a bit more but let's focus now on braking with a front wheel drive car essentially you don't want to unless it's a very tight corner you don't really want to do any weight transfer movements you just want to brake in a straight line find the grip and then turn in all in one motion really you don't want to turn in turn the opposite way like a Scandinavian flick or anything like that you just want to come down pick your braking point brake and then you just see that I was pumping the throttle to try and find attraction once um, I'd got my entry speed into the corner so yeah just brake in a straight line you can give it a little chuck in like that and we've got the rear to rotate um, but generally you don't want to rotate too much. So you just come down, with a nice firm brake, turn in. Uh, and yeah, that's that's all you really need to do. Um, so high speed braking, you, re you really want to brake in a straight line. Just come down, brake and then turn in. Carry the speed down. You, you don't really need to worry about touching the brake again. You can use a little bit to keep the, the front loaded, but shouldn't be a problem. See, so once I, I pass the apex of the corner, I can go on the throttle again. 
This here is more tricky though, because you got a bit of a dip, so you have to almost come off the throttle as you go through the the height of the crest into the dip. Glad you enjoyed the uh, the settings video today, GT. Would I recommend left foot braking? Yes, left foot braking is pretty much essential in a front wheel drive car. Typically, front wheel drive cars are a bit underpowered compared to, you know, rear wheel drive or four wheel drive cars. So, keeping your foot on the throttle as much as you can and uh, taking away the the time that it takes to go from your right foot. Uh, so, you, if you watch my feet now. Um, I can quite easily brake and go back on the throttle again. Um, you know, it's not taking me much time to do both actions there. Where if I brake with my right foot, it's taking a longer time to do both, and I can't keep the car as balanced either. Um, I can maintain the balance of the car with the brake on my left foot and the throttle on my right. Um, it means that I'm not doing any jerky movements that are causing the, the car to is not causing any weight transfer that's going to be uh, too much and you're going to lose control so left foot brake in a front wheel drive car is quite straightforward and something that you always want to use so you can see I'm I'm doing both actions I'm do, doing a little bit of throttle and a little bit of brake especially if I come on the throttle mid corner again the car tries to understeer um, you can see that I can use a little a little bit of brake there. You see I'm doing it. I'm starting to get a little bit of traction loss on the front tires where I use a little bit of brake. I can uh, stop it from uh, understeering too much. You can see you're just balancing both um, inputs at the same time. But one thing about bre left foot braking and something that you don't want to do too much of in real life is uh, hovering over the brake like this. You know, you've got the throttle on and you're not coming off the throttle much. This is something that I used to do in real rallying too much whenever uh, I started, started out in my career was this foot flat on the throttle and using the brake. Um, that very quickly overheats your brakes, boils your brake fluids. Um, obviously, I'm talking about real life because we, we don't uh, simulate them things currently. Um, but yeah, it's it's a bad trait to have, and you don't want to do that. You, it it's not quick either. You know, you want to just do enough braking and no more, and be tentative with the brakes. Don't slam on the brakes don't don't sit on them just do as, as much as you need you need to dance between them and keep the balance of the car yeah you don't want to brake and turn at the same time um, in a front wheel drive you can it's 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 not as as uh, straightforward as that though because you can use the brake while you're turning but you certainly don't want to be using loads of brake you know, we'll brake before and then we'll turn come off the throttle um, and that you know you shifted the weight onto the front wheels when you brake and then you come off the throttle or sorry off the brake and it allows the rear to come around like that so we've created weight transfer um, by braking, we put the weight forward on the front wheels, we get the grip on the front wheels turned in, and then the rear comes around. That's something that you want to modulate on gravel, you don't want to go too sideways with a front wheel drive, um, because if you start going too sideways, um, you only have the front wheels to keep your momentum going forward. 
So whenever you go sideways and over rotate, the front wheels are spinning and spinning. You're going to increase tire wear and you're not being as efficient going forward. Uh, so you always want to try and keep the rear wheels following the front ones, never going over, you know, never over rotating and going past the uh, the front wheels as such. Um, that's a good uh, a good way to, to try and drive is just to make sure, almost like a train, you want the rear wheels to follow the front, um, like a train track. I think that's a, a good way to, to drive. Thank you very much, Mike. Yeah, it was a, a fun event the other night in Di Digital Motorsport put on. Um, it was a lot of fun racing Craig Breen. Glad you're enjoying the uh, content, Jesse. Um, so we've covered braking now. Obviously, you can use a bit of trail braking too. Um, I don't really refer to it as trail braking. Ideally, you want to pick a braking point and that's it. So you're on the brakes the whole way into the corner, but as you can see, we didn't brake enough initially. So I think trail braking can be counterproductive a little bit because um, you're trying to carry a lot more speed in, whereas you're, you're better to go slow in and fast out it's always the best way to drive is uh, know roughly what speed you need to enter the corner at and then carry the speed out again so you're just modulating, modulating the throttle again trying to find that traction ooh there's a bit of a hole in there but yeah left foot braking really just you want to keep the car balanced um, so you come in break on the left foot I'm off the throttle and I go on the throttle now and I've done everything right I brake straight I turned in and the car wasn't any more on balance than what it needed to be it wasn't trying to understeer again so brake in turn in get on the throttle not too much not too much now we go full throttle That's uh, really all we need to do is just be precise with our inputs on the brake and the, um, the throttle. How do you feel the weight transfer? That's a very uh, good question, Jesse. Um, it's quite difficult to do that in game. Um, it's one of the things that is very hard to simulate. Um, so the camera that we're using at the moment doesn't have any sort of motion um, neither does this one really it's got a bit of bounce and stuff so you can feel the bumps um, weight transfer is quite difficult to feel in game you'll get some um, indication through the force feedback you can feel I can feel the car is loaded now um, no it's not so you can feel the weight of the wheel changes so no, now the, this side is it feels heavy now when I turn in, so I know that the car is loaded. Um, you have to use things like that to, to try and figure out how much load you have on it, and then you can you can sort of use that to figure out what the weight transfer is. You know, the wheel goes heavy when you load it, and then it goes light when you've lost uh, traction, so you know that you've went over that uh, point of of grip. I think that's why people use um, uh, glad you're enjoying the J Thrustmaster E Rally series too. Um, any tips for that rally? Um, New Zealand's difficult. You want to get into a good rhythm, try to be smooth, um, carry carry good speed. Uh, setup wise I'm not too sure but you, you 
definitely want to just get a good feeling. Yeah, breaking is an underrated skill. It's something that you need to to work on, and because um, whenever you break, you're transferring the weight of the car. If you come off the brakes again, then you're letting that weight transfer come off the front wheels again and move backwards. And that means you don't have as much grip turning in then. So you, you're better to brake and keep a little bit of brake on until you get to the apex because then you're not unsettling the balance further like two or three times when you go like on and off, on and off, on and off. You're unsettling the balance of the car every time. But if you come into the corner, you brake once and keep the brake on to turn in and find your apex. Um, you're loading the front wheels once and you're keeping that load, you're keeping that grip in the front tires the whole way around. Yeah, I was going to say that, Brian. Um, people use other devices to, to feel the weight transfer. You know, they might have a motion platform, which is obviously a lot of money. Um, or, you know, there's other things like a butt kicker. Um, personally, I like using VR. I feel like I can feel the motion of the car better when I use VR. Um, so I'm, I'm obviously keen to use more and more VR um, as much as I can because of that reason it feels like you're sat in, in the car and you know what the car is doing so um, you just have to find ways to that suit you if that makes sense that ways that you find or ways that you tell what the body language of the car is doing um, and figure those out because, you know, if you drive on bonnet view, it's quite difficult to know what the balance of the car is. You have to rely on what you feel. Um, whereas if you're sat in here, you can feel a little bit more because you see the pitch and dive of the car a bit more. Yeah, I imagine butt kicker with VR is good. So hard to go back to a monitor, to be honest. Right, so we've covered braking now, pretty much. We've covered throttle control. Um, how much FPS loss did you get switching to VR? I got I got a lot of FPS drop, but I have no issues now. Um, I got a. Actually, I got a 2080 Super and then I upgraded the 2080 Ti, so frame rate isn't really an issue for me anymore. Um, so we're all good. Um, but yeah, uh, the issue that I was facing is Streamlabs. Um, whenever you run that, the, just even run the program, it has to match all inputs of what you have um, in terms of resolution outputs, I mean. Um, so my monitor is 1080p, but obviously the Oculus Rift is, it's a CV1, I can't remember what the, the resolution is, but it's, it's not the same. So it ends up messing up the, the performance of that, um, and it starts dropping frames straight away. So I'm setting up a streaming computer, which should fix that, fingers crossed, and we'll be all good then. I think I can run things on high with, with the 2080 Super, or sorry, 2080 Ti, but it's definitely worth it, yeah. So, let's get back to uh, some lessons that we can take away. We've covered throttle control, we've a little bit more to cover than that, um, we've covered braking pretty much now. So let's talk about weight transfer a bit. So this is on tarmac here, we come in on tarmac we want to be smooth, especially on gravel tires because the, the tire blocks move around a lot, you don't have much grip. So we're being super smooth there. We come down to this corner, it's down through a dip, so we brake just before the crest, down through a dip. We turn in, you can turn in like that with a sharp input. We've, 
we've created a lot of rotation. Probably more than what we need, and we're scrubbing off speed. So if we come in, we brake, and try just to be smooth. We're using the brake just to balance the car, and it, a little bit of left foot braking can help uh, weight transfer as well. So we come in, we can just brake, feel what the car's doing. Look, we got a little bit of understeer, but not too much, and the car was well positioned through the corner. The rear wasn't sliding too much. So that's really what you want to do. Oh, we just locked up a little bit coming in there. It's really what you want to do with front-wheel drive car is keep, um, try to keep it as boring as possible, really. I know it's not the, the funnest way to drive, but you want to drive it almost like a uh, a race car, you want to find the grip, try not to slide around too much. Obviously you can slide a little bit like that, you know, that's not slow, but what we're trying not to do is over rotate the rear. Let's come down in again, we brake. And we just carry the speed through. Um, if we're coming into something like a hairpin, we want to brake. We can turn out the way a little bit of a Scandinavian flick. And we're going easy with the throttle again to find the uh, traction. Um, I, th I can certainly run VR in high settings. I don't know about ultra. I might try that. Hello Jody bro, good to see you here. Any difference between the DOR you, you have in real in real life and DR you choose in game? Three degrees of rotation. Yeah, there is a bit of a difference. Um, most modern rally cars use 540. I've been using between 290 and so anything from 290 to 400 ish, just because it, it feels a bit more like the precision and reaction that you would have from uh, a real life rally car um, but you can also uh, use 540 what it, what you'd use in real life and then turn up the or, yeah, minus uh, linearity which will give you a quicker response um, in the center movements so I've been playing around a bit with that um, you just need to find what feels good to you and what feels like realistic and go with that. I think it's different for everyone. Use the degrees of rotation that may, makes you feel comfortable but also you feel like it's what you might use in real life. So we come down here, this is tarmac again. We come in like this. Look, we tried to <laughs> we tried to break, turn the other way and then turn in to get weight transfer but the car didn't even didn't even rotate for us which is something that you need to be wary of too um, especially with gravel tires on tarmac so we come up here we're gonna brake pull the handbrake look we we lost all momentum being stupidly aggressive and erratic like that and we almost came to a complete stop. And what is definitely what you want, don't want to do. Front wheel drive and tarmac, you definitely need to be very precise with your throttle inputs on tarmac with a front wheel drive um, in wet. On dry, you're going to have loads and loads of grip, but in the wet, the front wheels are going to be the ones that want to spin up and slip, um, which gives you a lot of understeer and can give you torques there, it can spit you out in slower corners, um, the front's going to wash out, so you need to be quite uh, precise with your throttle inputs and also select the right gear. Um, selecting a higher gear can be better, um, can prevent uh, wheel spin. So we come in here again, look, we can carry second gear. Uh, just a little, a little touch of the handbrake. Um, so let's talk a little bit about handbrakes before we drive. You don't want to use too much, that's just all you need is a little touch. All you want to do is rotate the rear of the car a little bit, but not too much. You come in here, we're going to brake down the second gear. 
you can take as many little dabs at the handbrake as you want because the rear wheels aren't doing any, any driving. You're not going to damage any differentials. So you just want a little a little touch. But if it's not, you're always better to go a little bit less because if you don't do enough, you can just tug it again. Um, you come in just a little bit. Look, we didn't do enough. We can tug it until we get uh, enough rotation from the rear wheels. Because um, what we're doing is locking the rear wheels, as you'll know. Um, and we do it really long like that. We're stopping momentum and we're over rotating the car as well. We don't want to hold the handbrake. We come in and hold it. Though we've we've lost control. We've caused too much uh, too much loss in, in grip at the rear. Um, so we just want a little bit like that and keep the front moving forward at all times. Whenever we stop the front going forward, then we're losing time. That's all you need to do. Um, obviously, that's more of an open hairpin. Let's go and do a tighter hairpin because that's one of the trickiest things in a front wheel drive because you can't power slide throughout it. Um, so let's pick that. don't know about realism because I have no real experience, but I just worried about my usage of 360 was very unrealistic. To be honest, yeah, you, you know, degrees of rotation, you just need to pick what feels good to you. I think at the moment I'm using 450 for this video um, with minus 8 linearity, so we're getting a lot quicker um, movement in the, the small inputs in the, in the middle here. Um, but we're still got we've got a bit more lock to play with. Your wheel only turns 180, Jody. Uh, you need you need more more degrees, man. So let's handbrake around this pole. You want to keep as wide line as possible, whatever you can work with on the stage. We want to dip the clutch and just play with the throttle till we get going again. It's quite simple, but a bit tricky. Um, you know, say we don't have much room to work with, we need a, a bigger pull on the... I just touched it, but you need a bigger pull on the handbrake. Um, whenever you do your, your turning, it needs to be a sharp input to get the car to rotate. You want to move all the weight. So, see, we, we couldn't get enough rotation because we are number one, going too slow, and number two, we didn't turn in hard enough and get the uh, handbrake at the right time. So the tight hairpins are probably one of the most difficult things in our front wheel drive. So we come in, we want to come in at a bit more speed, and then pull the handbrake. So we actually stopped, that wasn't perfect, we stopped moving, but you want to use the clutch in that, in that case to stop the car from stalling or losing revs. You want to build up the revs again. So we come in. That was much better, and now we play with the throttle again so we get traction. We come down. Look, the car spat us out because we had put on too much throttle that time, and the the differential lost grip, obviously because it's tight, and the, the outside wheel pushed us out. That was under rotation. Um, yeah, I could use the handbrake and hairpins, square corners, and ones if they're tight ones yeah so that was quite nice that was that was nice rotation we didn't get any traction too much traction loss in the rear or the front so let's go in see look how look how close we kept to the pole i know you guys probably can't see it as well as i can but you want to just keep as tight to the inside as possible Oh that. So we're stopping the car from pushing the front out by using the clutch. Um, and we're also not smashing the throttle as well. So we get all the rotation from the handbrake and turning in. That wasn't enough rotation, but still not bad. Let's just show you one final one. So we come in. You play with the throttle. It's never pretty, um, hairpins are never pretty in front wheel drive cars, but you just have to 
try and get around them as quick as you can. It's actually a skill, to be fair. It's uh, easier to come in there in, in a four-wheel four drive car and just slide around it. Yeah, so Jody says, when I drove the R2 car in real life, I when I clutch kicked, um, the revs dropped. You need to keep the revs up, though. You need, to, I mean, you need to keep your foot on throttle. So, if we come in, we come in and just handbrake. Like, our revs have dropped because we didn't do the clutch. But if we come in, we put the clutch in. But look, we, we got too much, we we went too much, we, we had the clutch in, we went full throttle and we ended up getting loads of wheel spin. So clutch in, throttle, we're getting loads of wheel spin. But clutch kicking does work because you can see how much we got there. We come in, don't, don't use the clutch. It's maybe not the slowest way, but you do want to use a little bit. That was... Um, Obviously, a lot lower in revs. So, yeah, it's a nice little tool to use, the clutch kick. Dan says, is the Fiesta R2 and Dirt Light 2.0 fairly accurate in terms of handling? Yeah, it, it uh, is a lot like the real thing. Um, the guys in work use all real life uh, data. Um, they get a lot of data from the teams, so it's quite easy for them to to set up um, how that real life car um, should handle. And um, whenever they get the real life data, whether it's suspension data or chassis layout stuff like that, it gives each car its own character as well. Um, and then the car handling team try to tune every car to be as to be as realistic to its counterpart as possible um, you know to give it the same character um, you know whether it's like, it's like the Audi Quattro Group B it's got a big overhanging engine at the front so you know it's going to be a bit lazy on turning um, things like that where you know we're just trying to recreate what the car should feel like So, we've covered quite a lot of stuff now. Um, weight transfer, you know, you, you just don't want to, you don't want to do too much, because, you know, if you come in and do too much, you're going to slide, so we come in. Obviously, it's a front-wheel drive car, so we just get loads of understeer then, if we over, if we do our, do our throw in too much, you know, we're, we're chucking the weight about too much and it, it ends up spitting us out because the weight is over the front wheels and it pushes us out again. You know, we come in, we try to do some sort of weird Scandinavian flick. And look, we've just uh, scrubbed off all our speed, we've got no speed on the exit again and uh, we're, we're causing ourselves trouble. Um, we could end up crashing as a result. You don't want to do that, obviously. Again, that's too much. We're over-rotating. We're not going out of the corner quickly. So let's drive properly now. Brake, turn in, get the throttle. Not too much now. We can go full throttle again. All the way up through the gears now. We know we have traction. We know we're now on tarmac, so we're going to brake straight. Left foot brake in, find the grip. So we didn't, uh, we messed up that corner a bit, we didn't brake enough, and then we went on the throttle too early too. This corner we can take in fourth gear. You see we get a lot less wheel spin when we do that, even when we put on a lot of throttle, so it's quite a, a good way to drive. It's um, it's gonna 
be more efficient over the course of a stage. So down here, we can try taking us on third now. As you see, we're getting loads of traction because we're uh, keeping the revs down low in a higher gear. So we go up here, we want to brake harder this time. So we braked so hard we locked up a little bit, but look, we clipped the apex that time. Which is better, obviously. That's what you want to do. All about clipping those apexes. And that was uh, obviously me messing around again. Some wet conditions, yeah, I can do that for sure. With the setup in real life, I don't seem to be getting any time out of it. It's just me as setup. What setup are you using? So let's mess around with the setup a little bit now. Do 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 do. Sorry, if I'm over the camera, I'm just messing around with the chat here. Yes, Dan, hopefully I will get back to the real car soon. Um, good evening, Rainbow. Um. <laughs> Pant more time. Yeah, yeah, you go beat it now, bro. Hopefully you learned something from me. Um, It's always nice that I, I was teaching you. Teaching you how to beat my times again. <laughs> um, so, first of all, let's go and change a few settings. We'll show how you can influence the car. So, the car is not really tail happy at the moment. Um... This drop down to open the differential up, so it means that each wheel can turn more independent of each other um, off off the throttle, which can help us get better traction um, when we're turning in. Damping wise, so slow bump. If we go, or let's say we've got a little bit too much understeer, what we can do to begin with is. We could stiffen up the rear springs, but that's making all of the car more rigid. Um, but also, the rear anti roll bar is already stiffer than the front. Um, so we don't really want to go too stiff with the anti roll bar because it already is harder. We can go harder with the springs, which is gonna obviously gonna affect the car over bumps, but it's gonna affect how the car rolls as well, and it, it can induce the car to rotate a bit more and juice a bit more oversteer so we'll do that and what we also can do is um, the slow bump we can stiffen that up so that's gonna stop the car from um, absorbing body roll as such uh, the damper isn't compressing as much so it's gonna put more um, it's gonna put more uh, weight on the tire which is gonna cause us a bit more slip as a result So, if we apply that, we should see a little bit of a difference. We can go all we we can go a little bit harder if we don't see a huge difference, just to prove a point. So, number one, let's see what the difference is with the differential. So we should have a bit less understeer now turning in. As you can see, that's that is true. Um, we, you can already see the rotation I'm getting at the rear now. Um, the car's oversteering already. Look off the throttle. The front's turning in. We can, we can do whatever we want with the front now off the throttle. So this is where we were getting understeer up here. Let's see what the result is now. 
look how much turn in we're getting off throttle and that's down to mainly the differential we opened up the differential under braking um, but also it's down to the rear being a little bit more stiffer it's causing a bit, bit of rotation so you can see that the car is just generally a little less understeer you know we're getting better turn in the car is more it's more efficient actually we're getting look I didn't have to touch the handbrake went around there without touching the handbrake we got the rotation we wanted but not too much that's quite nice and that was just a few adjustments um, in terms of what we changed setup wise we opened up the differential on the braking and we stiffened the rear in terms of um, springs and slow bump and look the car is not trying to understeer on the throttle around there it's all very predictable now and that's that's what you want it's like a it's like a train going down a train track now we know what it's going to do. So, uh, Sasquatch, this will really help with your um, your wet tarmac, um, especially opening up the differential. that's how easy it is to, to influence the car um, basically what we were struggling with was um, the car was understeering a little bit too much um, and we completely died that out now um, it's it's as good as we want it to be now there's nothing I mean we could tweak it a little bit more but we've easily uh, dialed out what we were struggling with as such and that's what a lot of people struggle with in front wheel drive cars is understeer um, and that's the easiest way to dial out is take a look at the setup see what the difference is between the front and the rear we analyzed that we seen that the springs were quite a bit different um, we seen that the differential was quite close together um, in terms of lock so we lock, we opened up the the braking one um, and then an easy win really is stiffening up the slow bump because that's going to affect the slow movements of the suspension um, and yeah it, it works the tyre a bit more I'm glad that you found that um, useful Sasquatch, that was, yeah, it was quite an easy little thing to change. Um, and you've seen the difference that it made. So, <clears throat> let's, let's go on a tarmac stage now. And we can, we can show you wet and dry. Um, let's go time trial. Spain is probably notoriously the most difficult to set up for wet. So we're going to dry first of all. We'll go with the little opal again. Hello Aggie, I'm good bro, how are you? So we'll put on soft tires so we know we've got the, the grip from there. Um so, oh, what's that at already? So we're already quite open. That scared the life out of me. <laughs> a packet of cable ties just fell off the desk. It scared me. Um, so it's already quite open. So we might not have much issues here. It might be an easy little win again. It's just, it's all about small little things. We don't want to go crazy with setup. So, yeah, 100%. Um, what WCD sends, you, you need to go with your setup that feels good for you, but you can take some influence from what other people do. Um, 
try to learn from other people and what they do with setups, but try to understand what your driving style is and try to understand how to manipulate the setup to, to make the car do what you want. Yeah, yeah, the first I do, I've seen GTR's um, setup. Um, for sure, you can change way, way more. Well, I'm just trying to keep it quite simple um, this evening and show you guys that you don't need to change loads and loads of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it doesn't have to be loads and loads of stuff. You don't have to go crazy. Five, I think you want to learn what the car's three, doing a bit more. Two, one, go. So, right, 100, three left. let's just turn Phil off. Sorry, Phil. Uh, speech. Just so I can talk. Car's feeling good already. It's a little bit too... It's quite precise already, isn't it? We're not having to uh, work too hard at the wheel. We're getting loads of grip. I mean, this feels out of the box really good already. It's just gripping. And... Uh, we did analyze that before we started this stage that the, the front differential was already quite open on the braking and you can tell because we're not getting any understeer at all. It's a front wheel drive car and it's, it's, it's gripping, it's doing what we want. Look, it's like a train track. We don't have to change the setup. Sure, we could make it a bit quicker, it might be some things we can try, but in terms of what the car is fundamentally doing, it's not doing anything wrong. Maybe we can drive it really quick already out of the box. So yeah, we'll um, we'll go in now to a wet one and see uh, what that does. I think that's just a little bit too much. I'll go down to that. Well, that feels really good. We can keep the car in a nice window there. So let's go to a wet stage and see how much more difficult that is and what we need to improve. So let's go to the same stage, we go with a wet surface, we're going with the opal again. Yeah, I think that's a good, um, you know, if you don't have time to find the perfect setup for you and you want to find a quicker one, definitely use setups that are proven to be fast. So again... Let's go in with the wet weather. Let's see how much difference that is. So we're getting more slip, but the car didn't understeer there. Now you do need to be just so precise. You can see I'm not going flat out on the throttle. Oh, well, I am now, obviously, but in the corners, you know, you're waiting on the car. You want to brake, just be nice and um, precise. There's nothing wrong with this. We're on the right tire. It's, uh, it's all going smoothly. See that the rear, we're braking, we're getting good grip on the front, but because it's a little R2 car, 
um, and all the weight is at the front, the rear gets quite light there. So you can see when we brake, the rear is trying to square them out. Um, and that's something that you need to be wary of, but it's just part, part and parcel of a uh, front wheel drive car. No problem, Sasquatch, happy to do what? To be honest, this is a, a good little good little car. It's not doing anything we don't want it to do. It's going to be a different story if we put on soft tires in the wet. So let's see if we can uh, m multiply the difficulty that it is to drive in the wet by doing this. So let's see if we can make a bad situation better by tuning the setup. Um, so we'll, we'll get a a baseline now, so look, good loads of wheel spin. Well, you, that's when you need your good uh, throttle management. We turn in. To be honest, this isn't that bad, and it highlights how bad my setup was the other night in the John Armstrong Thrustmaster E Rally series. Because I was on soft tires. Look, look, we got understeer, but you need to come off the throttle. But this is a pretty good setup because we're on slick tires in the wet now, and we're not. We're not completely falling off the road. Look, we got we got un, oh, understeer with the throttle input there. We just came off throttle and we're fine. And this is the type of weather where you want to select a uh, higher gear as well. Just to minimize that wheel spin, but this is fine, this is A1 guys, this is no problem at all, the base setup is is good, the guy's done a really good job on this. Um, so let's go back to the service area again. Yeah, I think that's multiplied with the wet weather too, isn't it, the frizzle? Um, just know when you lose grip. What do you what do you have your tire friction set to in your force feedback settings? Yeah, front wheel drive cars are a lot of fun to drive. It's what I started off driving. Um, R2 cars are amazing, uh, especially on tarmac. Tarmac's actually so much fun in a front wheel drive car. Um, on gravel, you really want a, a more high speed flowing gravel stage for it to be really fun in a front wheel drive car but on tarmac it's 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 lovely um <laughs> i didn't make it look easy the other night whenever i was driving the polo but it it highlights that the setup wasn't right um so what can we change now to make it even better Let's uh, take that down a little bit. We can go softer here, so we'll go two off in the slow bump. Um, Anti-roll bars. We could go a little bit down on those too. So little, you don't want to change too much either. You want to go in little increments. You see, I was just having to modulate the throttle to get the traction off the line. And we made the car basically softer now, so the suspension is doing more work. We're getting understeer there, but we're managing it without, you know, with a little bit of left foot braking and not smashing the throttle. Come off the throttle, don't stand on the brakes, do all your inputs nice and smoothly. You know, I just want to be super clean and tidy. Try and carry the speed, see we, we just uh, try to carry a little bit too much and run wide there.
So I think we've actually made the setup worse. Getting a little bit more slip now. Which could be because we're not working the tire as much. Um, obviously you want to be working the tire to get, get it to bite. If the car's rolling too much then it's not using the tire. Look, scene of the accident. Um, complete and utter understeer. So, what did we change that messed it up? We changed the differential. Uh, we changed, we went softer on the slow bump. We went softer in roll bar, so... Let's go back to default. Spring rate. We take the front down a bit on that. We'll leave the anti roll bars. Um, slow bump, we'll try just going with the front only. Differential, it looks like the driving lock. Because the they're basically ramp angles, and when you change one, it affects the other. So, whenever we went softer or looser on the uh, driving lock, um, it affected the, the braking as well as, su as such, so it didn't seem to have a positive effect. Sometimes having a bigger gap between those two is what you want. Um, it's it's complicated. Don't get me started on differentials because so many factors to consider. So it's a lot of wheel spin there. We went up the gear in to find the traction. So what we've done now is just made the front softer. We put the differential back the way it was and you can already tell that it's back to being good again. We can be super smooth and precise and we're not worried that the car is going to do anything uh, we're not expecting. What we want is a pre predictable car that we can have confidence to push with. back to having a good setup now. So let's have a bit of a push and see just how far we can get. Oh, as I say that. <laughs> Messed up that corner again. It's when you start, look, I, I literally said oh, I'm going to start pushing. It's when you start pushing, that's when you start to put too much uh, Expect too much of the car, you're putting too much weight on it, you're not being balanced, you're not being smooth. Look, too much speed there, we hit the wall. So really you want to uh, have good patience with the front wheel drive car. Especially in the wet. Don't be smashing the throttle. Be realistic with what your expectations are of, you know, finding the grip and uh, not being too optimistic with your speed. So don't forget, we're on soft, slick tires here, so we're probably getting more grip in places than what we um, and less than the others. Um, there's no one that you might not get as much grip in places as you as you do in others. That's that's the bit that. Is tricky is because it can be inconsistent. The fact that we can drive, look, we're the front start on the steering, we come off throttle, but the fact we can drive this speed on wet with a uh, dry pattern is uh, just shows that it's all about being precise and not smashing the throttle, really. So uh, we experienced a bit of oversteer there. The car washed out a bit there. We just need to not shit ourselves. Yeah, be composed. 
you know, slamming on the brakes or going flat with throttle is going to do no good. You have to be precise at all times, even if you're out of control. Because uh, when you're out of control, what you really need is uh, precision on what you need to do to, to come back out of that. And uh, usually in a front-wheel drive car, if you've got um, understeer, your get-out-of-jail card is the handbrake. Um, if you've got oversteer, you want to keep maximum on the throttle, um, especially at high speed, because that'll bring the front pointing back in the direction of oh, of where you're going. Um, so we lost control there, but yeah. If you come in sideways, um, you want to keep the car going in the direction that you want to go, and you do that by just keeping on the throttle, and the front wheels pull you in that direction. So we're up the hairpin now. In brake, handbrake. Look, that was slow. Um, we uh, over rotated and basically come to a stop and that's not what we wanted to do that was too quick look Doosh. just locked up that's the tricky part but we are on soft tires we got the wrong tires on <laughs> hello Niall um, I am from Cash in Fermanagh You might know Mokris. You've probably been to Mokris before. Yeah, just be smooth. Um, Sasquatch, don't... Uh, don't go flat out from the get-go. Just get into a good rhythm. Take the first stage casual and then go. Right guys, so let's just prove the difference now of having a good uh So we're still getting locked we're getting locked up there. Um We could take a bit of preload off the differential and we will change the rebound a bit. Andy roll bars. We want to keep them the way they are. We'll go a little bit softer on the rear one. So, we're still with the harder tires. We get the weight spin there again. See how I waited until I got the traction before going full on the throttle if you, if you watch what my feet were doing. Getting understeer on the exit of that bend just by going too much on the throttle. push so we went wide here and that time look how we waited on the car a bit more um, we didn't go on throttle too early we didn't carry too much speed and uh, we got around it much cleaner than the last time so it's all about getting your entry speed right guys and then being tentative with your inputs mid corner was better too so we've improved the setup again we're taking a bit of preload off the front differential which means uh, it, the differential isn't as loaded up without any um, any throttle input at all so 
it gen in generally in general terms it makes the differential overall more open when you're off the throttle especially So you come over when you come over little crests as well, you come over little crests or bumps, you're gonna find a loss of traction as well, and that's when you need to either come off throttle a little bit or just be wary that you are gonna go out a bit wider than what you were expecting. See, we on set. Look at there. We're pushing a bit more. Now we're um, expecting more of the car and the tire. But it's fine. That's what you want to do is get to the maximum of the grip allowed. But we're going pretty fast here considering we're not on wet tires. have to have good patience feel what the grip is doing read the road as well but it's quite tricky to read the road when it's wet um, when it's all shiny if it's all shiny then you need to just be wary that it could be it could be slippery on any corner more than the other but in certain tarmac rallies you can spot differences in uh, the surface of the road and some surfaces are going to be slippier than others when they're wet uh, you know like concrete's going to have more grip because it's a coarser surface than uh, smooth asphalt Whoa. <laughs> I was carrying too much speed there See if we get the hairpin better this time. That was better. You're always going to have that little bit of uh, bit of a moment in a hairpin where you don't have any traction in a front wheel drive car. You just have to wait on it and be smooth with the throttle. So yeah, I went on the throttle, it started to understeer towards the bank and I came off it again and it saved us from hitting the bank. This is a lot of fun for me though because this is the type of thing that you face in real life and uh, you know, being precise with the car is, is what rallying is all about. So for me this here is actually a lot of fun. Let's get to the end of the stage so we can show you the replay. Um, WRC cars, they're about 540 or slightly less. Trail braking is when you come into a corner and you pick your braking point earlier than normal and then you keep on the brake like that there until you find the, the turn in point. It's basically you can use a little bit of throttle and braking at the same time but it's, uh, it's not braking too hard in the beginning and then carrying the Carrying more entry speed in is what you use trail braking for. I 
I'm always of the opinion you're better to go slow in, fast out, but uh, I do like to carry a good bit of speed as well. See, we messed that corner up, we were going to completely go wide and wipe out the the wall on the outside, but a little pull of the handbrake, you hit the, the wall then with the rear of the car, you're still going to do damage to the car, but it's, it's not going to be as, it's not going to affect your performance as much as hitting the front, because you got your steering, um, the steering parts, your engine, your radiator. It's, uh, it's always better to hit with the rear if you're going to hit anything. So yeah, it's actually going pretty well with the soft tires. It's all about just uh, having a good setup, but using everything up we've talked about this evening, having good throttle control. See that? I locked up on the brake and I knew it was going to go off. Just a little talk of the handbrake and we save, uh, save the day. But yeah, I was saying good throttle control, being smooth with your braking. Smooth with your steering inputs. And so let's we'll watch the replay now. Um. Do you think you could be anywhere near wet tire tines sauce? I don't think so. There's quite a big difference in time. That puts us 134th, which is okay in soft tires. We should have a crack with uh, wet tires now. Um, we'll just watch the replay a bit though. music off. Mm, that's a good question, Steve. Um, talk about the LSD hooking up. Um, Essentially what a lemon slip diff does, it's stopping the slip between the ta the each drive shaft and each wheel. Um, so if you've got an open differential, which most standard differentials are, the wheel that loses traction spins and the, the one that's not spinning gets no power from the powertrain. Um, so what a lemon slip diff does, it stops that happening essentially. Um, so depending on how tight your LSD is, uh, the difference between how the, each wheel spins independently, um, the tighter it is, uh, the, the so the tighter the differential is, the the more slip you're going to get on both tires whenever you lose traction on either of them. So say you go around a corner and the outside wheel loses traction, you're also going to lose traction on the inside one because uh, there's no difference between them. They're, they're not, the differential isn't differentiating the two tires, it's keeping them the same. Um, so this tire's getting power and this one's getting power and they both start spinning. Um, but if you have a more open one, then if the outside wheel starts spinning, 
the inside one won't spin and won't get as much power so uh, you obviously get less understeer or oversteer depending on what uh, if it's a front or rear drivetrain but yeah an LSD it's gonna feel nice especially in dry conditions um, you're gonna find more traction with that because it's allowing the car to use its power in a better way it's a, to get it down on the road um, it's not it's not wasting it on one wheel as such um, it's, it's quite a nice feeling Yeah, the game does look good with the graphics up. Uh, si Simon's um, in New Zealand. I'll be doing some practice tomorrow for New Zealand in VR. Possible to subtitle my videos. That could be a lengthy process. Can Does YouTube not subtitle videos automatically? No. Uh, you should be able to get the, the ones that it tries to pick up what I'm saying and subtitle it but obviously it'll pick up the co-driver's voice as well um, so maybe that's not gonna work I think subtitling my videos would be a lot a big big task mm. no problem Steve I think I explained that horribly but I'm glad you uh, found it insightful um, I'm not an expert on the the physical mechanical side of things. I know how things roughly work and I can badly describe that, but essentially that's what an LSD does. Um, and that's why you effectively try to take, if you're getting understeer or oversteer or whatever, and you open the differential up, you're taking away what an LSD does um, as such. You know, you're you're opening the differential up to try and find more traction, but uh, obviously, it's ne unless you open it up fully, it's never going to be as bad as what a, a normal differential is. The bottom three dots. Bottom three. Do oh, odd translations. Set video language, English. Um, English. Does it work? I'm not sure. So, someone's asked me about... Uh, sorry guys, I'm to get back out of this. <laughs> it's messed it up for me. Someone asked about uh, the fast, the slow bump versus va fast bump. So, slow bump affects um, the slow bump affects the slow movements of the damper. So. That's like when you brake, how resistant the damper is on pitch, um, yawn, and the slow roll of the body. So if we soften that, we're going to allow more body roll. We're going to allow the car to look at that. We're going to allow the car to pitch more. Um, but fast bump is more for like really fast movements of the damper. So compressions. Uh, we're talking about jumps, bumps. Um, that sort of thing so we would look at the fast movements more for the handling of the suspension over really bumpy sections or jumps so, you know how it lands does it rebound as well that's what we change the rebound for but you know we go over a big jump we're, we're changing the fast movement for how the car 
absorbs that jump. Um, and obviously, in Spain, we can go really hard with that because the car doesn't have to deal with many, you know, rough sections. There's no jumps or bumps or such. So, um, yeah, that's that's the, the difference in the two. And uh, you normally have a, a harder fast bump than a, a slow bump. So, I think to finish off, we'll do the stage with soft tires. Let's see what time we can do, and then we'll end the stream there, guys. Um, unless you get, uh, if you have any questions you want to know, just keep asking them. Uh, audio will turn to fill on. Go to eighty-five. Apply. We'll go back to the service area. We want to put the wets on now. Let's just see the setup because we've done a little bit. Let's see what time we can do. I will try that see if it works afterwards. Five, I thought it automatically four, translates. Three, Maybe two, I have to turn it on. One, go. Six right, 100. Three left, 150. Two left, extra long. So right. we're on a bit of a push now. Into three right, don't cut. Titans here, so we need to come off crawl. Into five right long, opens thirty. Oh! Two right long. <laughs> we'll restart. I shouldn't have cut that. Phil did say don't cut. Five, four, three. Um, setting two, up an R two in real life one, is a bit of engineers. They'll guide you what is supposed to be a good way to. To change the car depending on what you're struggling with but it's always good to understand it yourself as a driver and uh, try to change things yourself because you can change the damper settings between stages which I do quite a lot of, and that's what I was doing in Sweden and the car wasn't handling the way I wanted I uh, had just improved the setup and then we had our crash but it's uh, it's crazy the different setup can make in real life because um, we were so far behind the pace in Sweden on the first two stages and then on stage three and improved the setup by so much that we were on the leader's pace through that stage um, and then we just had the accident because of an error with uh, pace notes Four left tightens, three over bridge. Thirty. Four left long. Opens. Oh! Five right. <laughs> One hundred. Oh, that's not what we want to do. Five, four, three, two, one. Go. Six right, 100. Three left, 150. Two left, extra long, Titans. I'll see if we can get through this three right stage now, set a time. Where can we get to in the world? See if we get top 50, I think, is doable. Let's see if we can do it. Into three left, 30. Four left, don't cut, one right, opens of a crest. Into two right, don't cut, two left long, opens and tightens. Into five right of a crest, extra Just trying to carry the speed, not on the bands of the car too much. Long. Into six right, into two Taking right a nice long, opens of a crest. racing line. Six right, 
into cut five left, opens 150, two right, opens four, extra, extra long, 50. It's quite easy to outbreak yourself, four left, especially right, in the wet the surface. Break. 30, four left long, opens into five Nailed right, that time. 100. Narrow four right, into short, six left, 40. Four right, open six, and crest into two left, don't cut. Into five right long, three left long, tightens two. Opens six long of a crest. It's the long into corners as well, you need to have the patience on the longer corners. Opens Because the apex is small obviously cut. longer around. Left long. You need to wait, into three right not get on throttle too early. Into four left. Into four right. This is actually quite easy though. Left it's uh, the wet tires right. doing its job. Into cut three left we just need to be careful on Into the braking. Right of a crest. Into cut by left. We probably could have changed the, the brake right. bias to Open help with that though. Three right. Put a little bit more cut to the rear, right take left. the pressure off. Into six right of a crest. Into four left long, small cut. Fifty. Three right long opens. Into cut four left. Right. So we're starting to move the car around a bit more. Into keep right of a 50, four right, 100. Five left, cut late, extra long, 30. Early, five right of a crest, cut six left, 50. Six right long, cut six left, into six right. We're on it now, boys. Left, into six right, cut six left, five right. Into five left of a crest. Oh, six right long. 30, got it, got it, got it. Left, <laughs> That's what I want about. You need to keep your foot in it there in the front wheel drive car. Into four left. It'll pull 30, you in the direction you want to go. Just point the wheels in the right direction, character steer, whatever. Two left. Extra long. Opens 120. Crest into three right long. Tightens. Into cut. Five left. So we're 10 seconds up on what we've done previously with the soft tires. Three left long. Into five right. Into four left long. 80. Small cut. Six left. Into three right. Extra long. Tightens. 30. Six left, extra long, tightens four. Just all beginning into a good 30, rhythm now, guys. Right, right long, caution 30. Finding the grip. Right. Into don't cut three left long, slow 50, turn, head in right. 300. I was better there on that attempt of the hairpin because we didn't over rotate. Five right, into don't cut three left. I'm on. Um, Wet tires now, guys. This is wet tires. Into four right. Into cut three left. Into two right tightens. Into six left. Into six right long. Opens thirty. Keep right into two left tightens. Into three right. Into five left small cut. Into five right long of a crest. Into early five left of a crest. Opens fifty. One right long. Opens. Into early four left. Opens and tightens. Four left. Very long. 80. Two right. Small cut. And three right cut. Three left long tightens. Keep right over 80. Crest. And flat left. 150. Six left. 50. Four right. Open six, extra long, tightens over crest and pull. Four left. 20 seconds long, up now. Opens six, 60. This is actually a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. Flat right 50, three left long. Come on. Into five Send right it to long, the moon, boys. And short four right. It's just enjoyable because this takes more skill than you know sending on a gravel stage and you need to be more precise on this. And three left long. Opens one hundred. 
three left long, opens and tightens into five right. 30, two right tightens. Into six left, into five right small cut, five left tightens. Into five right long narrow, 30, four left, open six, extra long, 30, five right of a crest, keep left of a 30, four right small cut, into three left tightens, 100, six right, 150, six right, 30, don't cut three left tightens, Try and concentrate into now on this right, last little bit. Very long. Opens into five left long. 30. Three right long. Into four left. Extra long. Opens. Into five right. Extra long. Opens. Into six left. Into six right long. 41 seconds up. This is the left. difference, guys. Extra, extra in wets and softs. Opens, keep middle of a 30. Six left, into five right. Extra long, tightens. 100. Four right, into four left long, tightens. Into four right, 80. Flat right of a crest, into five left, 40. Three left, tightens. Into three right, into five left long, 50, six left, caution 30. Carrying a high gear. Right tightens. Stop Opens. the wheel spin. Six long, 30, two left long, tightens. Into three right, tightens of a finish, 50 to stop. So that was a bit of a quicker run. I have to change it to 96, upside down. Where did I put us in the world? Oh! Look at that guys, 6 seconds is all we need. To be, uh, let's, have, let's have another go, why not? Or should we just watch the replay? Let's just watch the replay. Watch a bit of the replay and then we might have another go. 6 seconds off the world record and there is not bad in the wet. Yeah, it's true. Jody only uh, OGs will remember the day that uh, you changed your number to 69. Two right. Didn't look so fast, but it is. You need it. You need to look slow to be fast on tarmac, especially in the wet. Right, let's go. Let's see if we can get it. Let's give it a go. Let's tune the car a bit more. They'll drop the right height down. Let's see what we can do. We like a good challenge, don't we? It's going to be difficult, though. Extra long tightens into three right of don't cut opens of a crest into five right long opens 30 
two right long. Into three left. 30. Four left. Don't cut. One right. Now Over I've gone full competitive John mode. Into two right. Don't cut two left long. Opens and tightens. Into five right of a crest. Extra long. Caution. Tightens two long. Into six right. Into two left long. Opens of a crest. Six right. Into cut five left. Opens 150. Two right. Opens four. Extra, extra long. 50. Four left tightens three of a bridge. 30. Four left long. Opens into five right. 100. Narrow four right into short. Six left. 40. Four right. Opens <laughs> six. And Already 1.4 up in the first right. sector. Come on. Into five right long. Three left long. Tightens two. Sorry, that green thing was never going to stand a chance. Opens six long. Never have a more record mode. Into one right long. Opens 30. Small cut. Three left long. Into three right long of a crest. Into four left. Into four right. Into four left long. Into five right. Into cut three left long. Into five right of a crest. Into cut five left. Into six right. Opens 50. Three right. Cut five left. Into six right of a crest. Into four left long. Small cut. 50. Three right long. Opens. Into cut four left. Four right. Into three left. Tighten a small cut. Slower. Into keep right of a 50. Four right. <laughs> it's going to be hard to do, cut. guys. Extra long. 30. Early. Five right of a crest. Cut six left. 50. Six right long. Cut six left. Into six right. Cut four left. Into six right. Cut six left. Five right. Into five left of a crest. Oof. Into six right long. 30. Four left. Big cut. Into sudden. Three right. Into four left. 30. Starting to overdrive a bit now. Runs. Into two left. Extra long. Opens 120. Crest. Into three right long. Tightens. Into cut. Five left. Into three right. Extra long of a crest. 50. Three left long. Into five right. Into four left long. 80. Small cut. Six left. Into three right. Extra long. Tightens. 30. Six left. Extra long. Tightens. Four. 30. Five right long. Caution. 30. One right. Into don't cut. Three left long. Slow. 50. Turn. Happen right. 300. So, can we do it? Can we do it? It's going to be difficult. Five right into don't cut. Three left tightens. Into four right. Into cut. Three left. Oh, three up now. Into two right tightens. Into six left. Into six right long. Opens 30. Keep right into two left tightens. Into three right. Into five left small cut. Into five right long of a crest. Into early five left. Lower car isn't good for the cuts. 50. One right long. Opens. Oh. Early four left. Opens and tightens. Uh, last time. Early I saved it, but last time. 80. Two right small cut. And three right cut. Three left long tightens. What happens when Keep you right start overdriving? Crest. And flat left. 150. Six left. 50. Four right. Open six. Extra long. Tightens of a crest and pole. Four left. Oh, come on. Long, opens six. 
60. Flat right 50. Three left long. Into five right long. And short four right. Four left long tightens. Into six right long of a crest. Slow 30. One right long tightens. And three left long. Opens 100. Three left long. Opens and tightens. Into five right. 30. Two right tightens. Into six left. Into five right small cut. Five left tightens. Into five right long narrow. 30. Four left. Open six. Extra long. 30. Five right to the crest. <laughs> Can we do it? Next of a 30. Come on. Four right small cut. Into three left tightens. 100. Six right. 150. Six right. 30. Don't cut three left tightens. Into four right. Very long. Opens. Into five left long. 30. Three right long. Into four left. Extra long. Opens. Into five right. Extra long. Opens. Into six left. Into six. Come right on. Long. Into four left. Extra, extra long. Opens. Keep middle of a 30. Six left. Into five right. Extra long. Tightens. 100. Four right. Into four left long. Tightens. Into four right. 80. Flat right of a crest. Oh! <laughs> right of a crest. Into five No! Left. No! Ah. Oh. Whoops, big massive F. We'll have one more go. I don't know why I think I can get away with hitting that thing. Didn't work the other night and it didn't work this time either. We have it in the bag though. <laughs> I just seen it on on playback. Uh, <laughs> right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Six right. One hundred. Three left. One fifty. Two left. It's going to be close though if we do it. Into three right, don't cut. Opens of a crest, into five right long, opens 30, two right long. Into three left, 30, four left, don't cut, one right, opens of a crest. Into two right. Don't cut to left long, opens and tightens, into five right of a crest, extra long, caution, tightens two, long. We can do it boys. Into six right, into two oh, left long, opens shit. of a crest, six right, into cut five left, opens Just driving two, too hard two. now. Two right, opens four, extra, extra long, fifty. Four left tightens, three of a bridge. Thirty. Four left long, opens. Into five right, one hundred. Narrow four right, into short, six left, forty. Four right, open six, and crest. Not as much left, as last time, but still okay. Into five right long, three left long, tighten. Oh! <laughs> The green, the revenge of the green pole. He actually went onto the car that time and uh, lifted it up. Opens 30. Small cut. Three left long. Into three 
right long of a crest. Into four left. Into four right. Into four left long. Into five right. Into cut three left long. Into five right of a crest. Into cut five left. Into six right opens 50. Three right. Cut five left. Into six right of a crest. Into four left long small cut. 50. Three right long opens. Into cut four left. Four right. Into three left tighten small cut. Into keep right of a 50. Four right. 100. Five left. Cut late. Extra long. 30. Early. Five right of a crest. Cut six left. 50. Six right long. Cut six left. Into six right. Cut four left. Into six right. Cut six left. Five right. Into five left of a crest. Into six right long. 30. Four left. Big cut. Into sudden. Three right. Into four left. 30. Two right. Tightens. Into two left. Extra long. Opens 120. Crest. Into three right long. Tightens. Into we are cut, not. Five left. Into three right. Extra long of a crest. 50. Three left long. Into five right. Into Whoa. four left long. 80. Too greedy there. Cut. Six left. Into three right. Extra long. Tightens. 30. Six left. Extra long. Tightens. Four. 30. Five right long. Caution. 30. One right. Into don't cut. Three left long. Slow. 50. Turn. Happen right. 300. Much of a march, isn't it? Five right into don't cut. Three left tightens. Into four right. Into cut. Three ah, left. Ah, right, four up. Come on. Into two right tightens. Into six left. Into six right long. Opens 30. Keep right into two left tightens. Into three right. Into five left small cut. Into five right long of a crest. Into early five left of a crest. Opens 50. One right long. Opens. Into early four left. Opens and tightens. Four left. Very long. 80. Two right. Small cut. And three right cut. Three left long tightens. Keep right over 80. Crest. And flat left, 150. So hopefully you guys can see all 50, the different things we talked about right. tonight. I'm Open using them six, now. Extra long, tightens of a crest and pole. Four left, extra long, opens six, 60. No. Flat right, oh, 50, ah. Three left long. Lost by the time. Into five right long, and... Short four right, four left long tightens. Into six right long of a crest, slope 30, one right long tightens. And three left long, opens 100. Three left long, opens and tightens. Into five right, 30, two right tightens. Into six left, into five right small cut. Five left tightens. Into five right long narrow. 30. Four left. Open six. Extra long. 30. Five right of a crest. Keep left of a 30. Four right small cut. Into three left tightens. 100. Six right. 150. Six right. 30. Don't cut three left tightens. Into four right. Very long. Opens. Into five left long. 30. Three right long. She is slippy stage. 
into four left. Extra long. Opens. Into five right. Extra long. Opens. Into six left. Into six right long. Into four left. Extra. They still need to get the job long. done. Opens. Keep middle of a 30. Six left. Into five right. Extra long. Tightens. 100. Four right. Into four left long. Tightens. Into four right. 80. Flat right of a crest. Into five left. 40. Three left tightens. Into three right. Into five left long. 50. Six left. Caution 30. Three right tightens. Opens. Six long. 30. Two left long tightens. Into three right. Tightens of a finish. 50. To stop. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Donna. No! to go again. Not having it. You guys can stick stick and uh, watch if you want. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, two tens. One, Screw that. Go. Six right. One hundred. Three left. One hundred and fifty. Two left. Extra long. Tightens. Into three right. Don't cut. Opens of a crest. Into five right long. Opens 30. Two right long. Into three left. 30. Four left. Don't cut. One right. Opens of a crest. Into two right. Don't cut. Two left long. Opens and tightens. Into five right of a crest. Extra long. Caution. Tightens two. Long. So we lost a bit of time in this corner here. Into six right. Into two left long. Opens Not much though, we're still behind the ghost. Six right. Into cut five left. Opens 150. Two right. Opens four. Extra, extra long. 50. Four left side. Not going to be easy. 30. Four left long. Opens. Into five right, 100. Narrow four right, into short, six left, 40. Four right, open six, and crest uh, into two on. left, don't cut. Into five right long, three left long, tight two. <laughs> Again, the pole. Oh. Uh. Six right, 100. Three left, 150. I have to do this for you, boys. Extra long, this one's for everyone that's watching. I have to do it. Into three right, don't cut. Opens of a crest. Into five right long, opens 30. Two right long. Into three left, 30. Four left, don't cut, one right, opens of a crest. Into two right, don't cut, two left long, opens and tightens. Into five right of a crest, extra long, caution, tightens two long. Into six right, into two left long, opens of a crest, six right. Into cut, five left, opens 150. Two right, opens four, extra, extra long, 50. Four left tightens, three of a bridge. 30, four left long, opens, into five right. I thought carrying fourth there might work, and it did. Narrow four right, into short, six left, 40. 
four right, open six. Hey. Into two left, don't cut. Into five right long, three left long, tightens two. Opens six long of a crest, into one right long. Opens 30, small cut, three left long, into three right long of a crest, into four left, into four right, into four left long, into five right, into cut, three left long, into five right of a crest, into cut, five left, into six right, opens 50, three right, cut, five left, into six right of a crest, into four left long, small cut, 50, three right long, opens, into cut, four left, four right, into three left, tighten, small cut, into keep right of a 50, four right, 100, five left, cut late, extra long, 30, Early, five right of a crest, cut, six left, 50, six right long, cut, six left, into six right, cut, four left, into six right, cut, six left, five right, into five left of a crest, into six right long, 30, four left, big cut, into sudden, three right, into four left, 30, two right, tightens, into two left, extra long, opens 120. Crest, into three right long, tightens. Into cut, five left. Into three right, extra long of a crest, 50. Three left long. Into five right. Into four left long, 80. Small cut, six left, into three right, extra long, tightens, 30. Six left, extra long, tightens, four, 30, five right long, caution, 30, one right. Into don't cut, three left long, slow, 50, turn, hairpin right. 300. Right, into don't cut, three left. You got it, boys. Let's keep it going. Into four right, into cut, three left. Lost a little bit in that section, into two not right much. Lightens. Into six left, into six right long. Oh, wow. Open two wheels. Right into two left tightens. Into three right, into five left small cut. Into five right long of a crest, into early five left of a crest. Opens 50. One right long. Opens. Into early four left. Opens and tightens. Four left. Very long. 80. Two right. Small cut. And three right cut. Three left long tightens. Keep right over 80. Crest. And flat left. 150. Six left, 50, four right, open six, extra long, tightens over crest and pole, four left, yes, come on, long, opens six, 60, flat right, 50, three left long, into five right long, and short four right. Four left long tightens. Into six right long of a crest. Slope 30. One right long tightens. And three left long. Opens 100. Three left long. Opens and tightens. Into five right. 30. Two right tightens. Into six left. Into five right small cut. Five left tightens. Into five right long narrow, 30. Four left, open six, extra long, 30. Five right of a crest, keep left of a 30. Four right small cut, into three left tightens. 
100. Six right, 150. There goes a bit of time. Come on. Six right, 30. Don't cut three left tightens. Mess that up a bit. Into four right, very long. Opens. Into five left long. 30. Still ahead, it's right okay. Long. Just need to keep going now. Into four left, extra long. Opens. Into five right, extra long. Opens. Into six left. Into six right. It's all right. Long. It's fine. Into four left. Extra, extra long. Opens. Keep middle of a thirty. Six left. Into five right. Extra long. Tightens. One hundred. Four right. Into four left long. Tightens. Into four right. Eighty. Flat right of a crest, into five left, forty, three left tightens. Into three right, into five left long, fifty, six left, caution, thirty, three right tightens. Opens, six long, thirty, two left long tightens. Into three right, tightens of a finish, fifty. Come on! <laughs> oh, hi PJ. Good to see you here, bro. Unofficial dirt account. Oh. Show the replay. Told you I'd get it. Yeah, I'm using a clutch kick in the odd place, I think. Build up the revs. Into five right of a crest. That was, uh, that was actually a lot of fun. I don't normally drive in Spain that much, so it was nice to do something a bit different tonight. Front wheel drive. Flat out tarmac. Thank you very much guys for uh, congratulating me. It's always nice though to get a world record, no matter if it's uh, wet or dry. Um, that was quite difficult. Should be a good replay too, though. If only I drove like that on my uh, actual John Armstrong Thrustmaster E Rally uh, in Spain. It'd be nice if Opal would give me a call, to be fair. Uh, in 2015, I'd done the ERC Junior, and uh, in the Circuit of Ireland, day one, we were uh, beating the factory Opal drivers by half a minute. And uh, I've heard stories of the team boss going absolutely apeshit at the fact that we were beating their cars by so much um, because let's be honest the Opel Adam was the the car to have back then and uh, the best on tarmac and the the Opel Motorsport guys knew that and they, they couldn't understand why I was beating them it was a funny story and I remember off the back of that they were they were quite nice to me in his oars um, but yeah I never really got a break or anything with, the, with Opel I think if you want to drive with them, you have to bring money. Alright, Sasquatch, see you later, bro. Display the number of entrants in the top list. Is that on leaderboards?
Yeah, I can give that a go, Jody. We'll do that in the next stream. We'll do that in the next stream, bro. Um, remind me on the next stream. I won't be streaming tomorrow, I don't think, but remind me and we'll do that stage the next time, Jody. I enjoyed this evening's stream, guys. Um, thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, it was nice. I think uh, it's good for me to do a mixture of monitor streams and VR. Um, but I think I need to get a triple screen set up. Would be a good... Uh, I think triple screen would be nice. Because it just gives you a bit more peripheral view. Um, I think that would be nice for, for streaming with monitor. be nice to have the option of both. So the number of entrants on the leaderboard does not show that, no? I'm not sure we're going to be able to patch that, but I'll, I'll have a little cheeky, cheeky little ask. So guys, we went from teaching you all the things that you needed to do to, to get a fastest world record in a front wheel drive car. Um, and we managed that this evening. Um, so I think it was a really good uh, lesson, uh, a good little uh, tutorial session. We'll just finish this replay out and then we'll uh, end the stream there. There's the corner I messed up. Just a bit wide, we got away with it. Next time you to stay in here. Thank you, whoever just subscribed. I'll watch out for it now on the uh, stream because I don't have stream labs up. <laughs> yes, S55WRC. You will be setting world records tomorrow, mate. Oh, I'm wrecked after that. I need to get a proper stream light because this is an LED and I think it's messing with me. Almost at the finish now. Taking the plastic spacers off your throttle and brake. Um, I don't think so, no. These are the uh, TLCM pedals. Justin Hoyt, thank you for subscribing, dude. Right, that's us. Let's just see that set up because we did change it a little bit as well towards the end there. Bingo. Right, we go. Do, 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 do. Um, the question about the plastic spacers off my throttle and brake. These are the TLCM um, pedals. I don't think 
I take I took any plastic washers off it, no. It's gonna be a junior club for esports championship because I'm not happy that people are going like hell. Um could run another one. I probably will keep running events anyway. Um after the Thrustmaster the John Armstrong Thrustmaster E Rally series is over, I'll keep doing um setting up club events, but they won't be the with well we'll get some prizes but maybe not all the thrust thrustmaster prizes. Yeah, that's what I just touched upon. Hopefully I'll I'll organise more and we'll see what sort of prizes we can get guys. Um but yeah, I think I'll do for this evening guys. Um thank you very much for tuning in. It was a good stream. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um and we will do another one during the week. We need to do Rally New Zealand um, in the Thrustmaster or the the John Armstrong Thrustmaster E Rally series. Um, so we've got to look forward to this week. So I need to do a bit of practice tomorrow. Um, but yeah, guys, until next time, thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you learned something today um, and most of all enjoyed it. So yeah, until next time, see you soon, guys. Cheers. <laughs>